Hey everyone, it's Amanda with My Life My Way. Today is the last day of EMS week and today I wanted to make a soap that's kind of dedicated to my emergency services family. Um, we have a huge endemic right now going on with a massive amounts of suicides happening. Um, not just in emergency medical services or EMS, uh, we're also seeing it fire in police officers, our corrections officers, our dispatchers, the hundreds of thousands of volunteers that make your emergency system function. Um, so this soap is actually kind of dedicated to them a little bit. Um, I do participate and like give money to a lot of other fundraisers that do a lot of uh, raising awareness for PTSD and that kind of thing. Uh, this shirt being one of them. They're out of um, Ontario. They're I've Got Your Back, so it's Police Nights Fire. Um, kind of an everybody fights together kind of a theory. Um, I wear the tank tops around all the time. I have actual t-shirts um, that say paramedic on the back that I teach first aid in. I'm not allowed to teach in uh, this, apparently. Tank tops are not a thing. Um, I also uh, sponsor a coffee company. I love, love their coffee. Um, it's called True Heroes. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. There we go. Um, they're actually out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, which is a small town I spent a lot of time in. I even worked in their emergency services a while back. Um, I was part of their family. Um, and a year ago, this month actually, we lost one of our supervisors. Um, he lost his fight to PTSD and it was extremely startling. Um, it was the first time that I'd ever lost somebody that I knew in our family. Um, like we all know that suicides are, are happening. They've happened in my city before. They've happened to friends of friends before, but they've never actually happened to somebody that I knew that I'd worked with. Um, and I think what was so startling was he was always so positive and always so upbeat and you never knew um, that anything else was happening behind, um, behind his eyes. So, um, this coffee scented soap is going to be kind of dedicated to him. Um, I'm going to make it with the True Heroes coffee. Uh, I emailed them a little while back and asked if it'd be okay if I mentioned their name and, uh, use their coffee in a soap. And they said that'd be fantastic. So, I don't know if you can see my coffee mug. It's even EMS. <laughs> my husband bought it for me a few years ago. Um, but the... True Heroes Coffee is a brilliant blend, by the way. If you've never actually tried coffee and you love coffee, you should be drinking it. Um, I have it in whole bean form. You can hear it. Uh, and what I'm going to do for the soap is I'm actually going to grind up some of the soap um, and or grind up some of the coffee beans and use them as an exfoliation agent in the soap. Um, I'm also going to make a cup of coffee and put it in, like exchange it out with some of the water I use for the lye water solution. So there's actual coffee in your soap bar. Um, and then I have a coffee fragrance oil. So this is not an essential oil, it's a little bit different. It's a scented oil, so it's a fragrance oil. I don't know if you can see this. I get this from Windy Point. They're out of Calgary. I'm not sure if you can see it right now. I'll try and stick in a picture later. Um, but it's from Windy Point. They're out of Calgary. Um, and they do a whole bunch of essential oils and scented oils and all kinds of soap making kind of things. And it actually legitimately smells like coffee. So I'm super excited to make this today. Um, and then I'm hoping that if you buy a bar of soap or you watch this video, um, that you remember to get in contact with your friends that are in high risk communities for suicide, like um, the emergency services family, although we're not the only community that's uh, at high risk. And just make sure you kind of check in on them. Um, make sure they're doing okay and be watching for signs of depression and PTSD. And actually during this video today, um, while I'm making the soap, we're actually going to talk about some of the things to watch for in other people. It's really hard to notice depression in yourself. Um, I know I didn't. I know my husband had to be the one that told me that there was an issue and I needed to go see my doctor about it. Um, and when soft encouragement didn't work, he actually handed me my car keys and said, you have to go right now. Um, and to be honest with you, it's what I needed. So we're going to talk about some things today. Um, so I encourage you to share this video around to people that you love. Um, buy some of the coffee, buy some of the shirts, check in with your emergency services family. Um, and yeah, we're going to go make some soap. Hey everybody, we're back to make some coffee soap today. So in this bucket right now, I have my oils. They're olive oil, coconut oil, cacao butter, and macadamia nut oil. We have that all melted down. And then in this container, I have my lye water solution. So I'm just going to pour that down. It's not down a stick blender, but it'll work. Do you like my new uh, spatulas? I bought them at a craft store here in town. I uh, could not resist having a pink and blue spatula. 
<laughs> it's just one of those things that kind of has to happen. So, all right, so we got that out of there. And now we're going to blend this up until it reaches a nice light trace, and then we'll move on from there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of coffee in. This is the True Heroes coffee. So we have five ounces of their coffee. And it's just at room temperature, so it's nice and cool. All right, so let's go ahead and blend this up. Okay, so now that we have that in, we're also going to add in this coffee bean fragrance oil. I don't know if you can see this. It's from a company uh, called Windy Point, based out of Calgary. So I have my pre-measured amount right here. We're just gonna go ahead and pour that all in as well. Guys, it smells super like coffee in my house right now. Perfect. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stick blend that in too. The other thing we're gonna add in here is two tablespoons of freshly ground coffee. This is gonna give you a nice exfoliant in there. And again, it's the True Heroes Coffee Blend. We're gonna pour just a little bit of this out. Maybe that much. There we go. So I have this tiny little container right here. And we're gonna add just a little bit of uh, cacao powder to it. So you should be able to smell this in the finished bar and you should be able to see it in the finished bar as well. All right, check that out. A Little bit of a darker color. A little bit of a more cocoa-y kind of scent to it. And now we're ready to pour it into my mold. All right, so I'm not sure if you guys can truly see this, but I can't look up for right now, so hold on for a second. It smells amazing, guys. And those little coffee bits in there look super cool. And yes, I just used a term of super cool, I don't care. <laughs> All right. And then, I'm going to attempt anyway, something called a draw swirl. I don't know if this is too thick to do it, but we're gonna give it a shot. Who knows what this is gonna do? <laughs> oh, this may not go very far for me. It is super ploppy. Let's push it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a little bit too thick to get an actual draw swirl going, as evidenced by, it did not do a draw swirl. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to like hold this up and have it just kind of like slime in there and it should like kind of pour, but it's a little bit too thick for that. Got a little bit too thick over the day. That's okay. Adding things like coffee to your um, soap can actually cause it to increase how fast it sets up. So it's not a huge surprise that this didn't work all the way, but it still kind of looks kind of neat. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a close up and then we will uh, wait about 18 to 24 hours, and then we'll cut it up and see how it looks on the inside. All right, everybody, so here's the top of the finished bar. You can see all the little flecks of uh, coffee in there. You can see the darker color of the added cacao powder versus the lighter color that's kind of underneath it. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm actually really happy with the way that it turned out, even though I couldn't quite get the squirrel I wanted to. But uh, I guess we'll cut it open tomorrow, and we'll see how good this went. Hey everyone, so we're back. It's been, actually I left it for a couple of days just because we've been busy. But check out the side of this bar. Does that not look super amazing? See all the coffee in there. You can still smell it. On the top here we have this like nice kind of chocolate layer that was supposed to be a drop swirl that failed epically on me yesterday. Uh, or the other day when we were kind of putting this together. It did accelerate a lot, so I didn't end up talking a whole lot about anything to do with depression and anxiety just because I was uh, focused and a little maybe anxious by myself. So I'm going to take out my cutter and we're going to talk a little bit right now um, about depression and anxiety because if this is going to be a um, break the stigma coffee bar soap then we should be talking about it. So um, let's see here, I'll line this up. So we're talking about depression. A lot of people think that depression is just sadness and what they don't understand is that it's not necessarily anyways 
a feeling of sadness. In some people it is kind of a sadness. It's almost like an overwhelming hopelessness uh, more than it is just sort of your regular kind of everyday sad. Um, being sad in life is normal. Everybody kind of goes through that. We all have days that are life sad. Um, depression is not having a bad day. Depression is bad weeks, bad months, sometimes even in some cases bad years where it just doesn't seem to get better. And I'd like to point out, look at the inside of that. It kind of did drop swirly just a little into the top of the bar there. It smells like a mocha. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Between the cocoa butter, or cacao butter, however you want to, or cacao powder, sorry, or cocoa powder, however you want to pronounce that, um, on the top and the coffee on the inside. Oh my goodness, it smells good. But anyways, um, in some people, like for myself, um, this last time around, it wasn't sadness. I didn't have any feelings of like overwhelming kind of hopelessness or sadness. I was angry. I was bitter. I was sarcastic, I was self-depreciating, I would get mad at you if you told me the sky was blue. Like it just, it was this overwhelming anger that I had almost all the time that I couldn't seem to control. And while I wasn't sad per se, um, I cried because the octopus on TV died last year. <laughs> um, I wasn't watching the TV, I was doing cross stitch in front of it. Um, and it was just sort of like background noise. So, you know, I'm not really sure what happened there, but it is definitely a symptom of depression to kind of act like that. Um, in a lot of people, they notice sleeping pattern changes as well. In some people, it's almost like an insomnia. That's definitely the more common version where they're just, they sleep for maybe an hour or two at night. Um, and in some cases they go completely op the opposite where they'll sleep for 16, 17, 20 hours a day if you'd let them. Then they just can't seem to like physically get themselves out of bed. They can't seem to wake up that much. Uh, food changes is another big one. In some people they almost can't eat at all. And in some people they just eat everything that's within sight. And you can actually float back and forth on those two sides. Um, even as the same individual suffering through the same round of depression. And I'm definitely one of those people if I'm really, really having a really, really rough day, I can't eat anything. But if I'm having like a bad day with my depression, I literally eat my feelings. Um, it's, it's pretty horrendous. I actually kind of waffle back and forth between the two. Um, you see an increase in, sometimes people call them reckless behaviors. Some people call them negative habits. And it depends on the person as to what those negative habits sometimes are. But we think of things like smoking, drinking, gambling, um, but even playing like dangerous sports, things like that, um, an increase in drug use or starting in drug use, even like risky behaviors like drinking and driving, things like that can all be sort of part and parcel to um, having depression. Um, the really, the worst part about depression is it causes a withdrawal from your uh your social circle, which unfortunately are the same people that should be able to bounce you out of a depressive episode. Um, so really check in on your friends that haven't been checking in lately. It's probably not because they don't want to talk to you, but because their brain has convinced them that you're, or they're not worth talking to. Um, and they don't want to bother you. They don't want to interrupt your day and interrupt your time with their issues. Um, so really kind of check in on those people. Those are the people that usually have the most amount of issues. Um, if you're dealing with somebody that has depression or they've mentioned anything or you've noticed some changes, you know, they're not coming into work anymore. They're putting in less effort than they used to at work. Um, they're calling in sick a lot more. They're late more often than they used to, or you notice this at home in their home life, depending on, you know, what your relationship is with this person. Ask them straight up if they're having issues with depression. Maybe they just need to talk about it. And in some cases, that's totally what needs to happen. They just need to kind of let it out and let it vent out. And sometimes really as a, as a person, Relating to somebody that's having a depressive episode, that's really all you can do. But if somebody is suffering from depression, there are two questions you need to know. Or for two questions you need to ask. The first question is, are you thinking about committing suicide? Asking somebody who's suffering from a depressive episode if they're thinking about committing suicide will not encourage them to start thinking about suicide. Somebody who's contemplating suicide has thought about it for a while. It's almost become a fantasy because it's a way to make the pain end that they're going through. Um, if somebody is saying yes, determine if they have a plan. Um, the more intricate the plan is, the more detailed the plan is, the more likely they are to lose their life to that depressive episode. 
if somebody says yes they're thinking about killing themselves you need to be on the phone to 911 that is a call to the paramedics or put them in your car and drive them to the hospital whichever position you happen to be in with them that is a life-threatening emergency with depression the other question you need to ask is um, are you thinking about hurting yourself or anybody else some people with depression while well, they don't necessarily think about suicide may think about hurting themselves or hurting somebody else that they may perceive as causing that depressive episode and again if they say yes to that answer or that question they need to go to the hospital whether it's by ambulance or you put them in the car and take them yourself whatever it happens to be and they gotta go check this out i'm pretty excited about this when it comes to anxiety we have like an exacerbation of anxiety is usually what we see when we think about anxiety so anxiety disorders can actually um, come up in multiple ways and multiple things, but generally speaking, we usually think about it in forms of attack, right? So anxiety attacks and panic attacks are actually two different things. Anxiety attacks um, are usually, usually, <laughs> usually caused by a trigger. So they're some sort of stressful event, exams, bills, lost their job, new job, promotion in their job, new baby at home, any of those kind of stressors. Um, and the symptoms of an anxiety attack is still physical. So, ooh, are you gonna focus? There we go. Um, it's physical. So they end up with like shortness of breath, chest pain, and lightheaded. Um, they can't breathe. Their heart is racing. It gives you pounding out of their chest. They have um, a lot of fear happening. This is my last little bar, by the way. This is the one I'm gonna cut up into samples and use here in my own house as well. Um, but. Anxiety attacks are usually kind of develop gradually and they consistently get worse. Um, but anxiety attacks are not a diagnosable condition. Um, they just kind of happen and then they kind of sort themselves out once somebody is able to kind of settle down. A panic attack is can actually be um, part of an anxiety disorder. Uh, and in some cases, there's actually no specific trigger. They're just chilling out, watching TV, all calm and comfortable. And then all of a sudden their anxiety or their panic attack kicks over. Um, and they have the same physical symptoms as an anxiety attack. So that like pounding, racing heart, shortness of breath, like headiness, that fear, except that fear becomes um, almost like they're in terror that they're going to lose control entirely. And they might actually actually die in that situation. Um, and it's a very, very real fear. Um, and all those symptoms, while they're the same symptoms, are definitely markedly increased in a panic attack. Um, it occurs suddenly. It doesn't have, occur for any specific reason that anybody can kind of figure out. Um, and it is usually part of a bigger sort of anxiety in a diagnosable condition. Um, if somebody's having an anxiety attack or a panic attack, the treatment for them is still the same. Um, well, <laughs> The yes, they need to calm down. Telling somebody to calm down in an anxiety or a panic attack is about gonna work about as well as like telling your spouse to calm down in a, in the middle of an argument. Uh, in saying so, it's not gonna work for you because that's never worked in like the history of anybody that's people. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But you do need to get them to calm down. So generally, what I tell people is to like focus on their breathing because with people with anxiety attacks and even sometimes in panic attacks, just coaching their breathing and getting them to take longer to breathe out can actually um, decrease a lot of those symptoms and cause that anxiety attack to kind of back off um, or that panic attack to back off. So I usually tell people to like kind of breathe in with me and then I actually count out loud for five and have them breathe out as I'm counting and then take another breath in and then we count out for one, two, three, four, five if somebody's breathing out. And it tends to actually slow down some of that breathing rate. If they are suffering from intense fear though, and you can't get the breathing to calm down, absolutely phone the paramedics. We do have medications that are available um, to us in a toolbox of things that we can use to kind of help somebody kind of um, move past that panic attack. Um, but it is also medication they may actually have at home. So if you are somebody that suffers from depression and anxiety, um, or if you know somebody is suffering from depression and anxiety, generally speaking, again, as long as they're not willing, wanting to hurt themselves or somebody else and they're not thinking about suicide, um, things that you can get them to do, there is a health hotline in Alberta anyways. Uh, it's a mental health hotline, it's 211. Um, and they can call that, they can call health and get 811. Uh, but generally speaking, I tell people to go to their family doctor. In Alberta, we have uh, the primary care network full of doctors. Um, and they have lots of mental health courses you can take, especially in the bigger epicenters. 
um, about things like cognitive behavioral therapy and things like that, that are specifically built for people with depression and anxiety to help them deal with it. So um, it might be something to like refer your friend back to and help them get help. And really you need to encourage them to go see it. My husband and I talked about me seeing, getting treatment for a long time, um, like months and months. And I just figured, no, 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 it'll get better next month. It'll get better next month. Like this isn't the way it's going to be. And eventually he had to like walk me to the door and hand me my car keys and tell me to go right now because it's what I needed. Um, and don't be afraid to do that. If somebody needs that help, you need to encourage them to go get it. It might be a little softer than that. Like it definitely didn't start that way. It just kind of culminated in that end. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say today about depression and anxiety. Thank you very much for watching. I think this soap is going to just color a little bit more. If you take a look at this soap here, See how there's like a little bit of a different color here where it's been exposed to the air? Most likely is this soap bar here is actually going to discolor to the rest of this, this shade that's on the edges here for the rest of the soap bar with the exception of these darker pieces um, from the cocoa slash cacao powder that I put in there. All right, guys, and these are all of the finished soaps. Check these out. Got a couple of really neat ones. So that little swirl worked out not awfully, considering how fast that set up on me. And I've got a couple little sample bars, and that one in the middle is just going to be my personal one, so I can test and see how much I like it, and if I should make any changes. And uh, we'll let these sit on a shelf for four to six weeks until they're ready to rock and roll. Hi everyone. So it's been about seven weeks since I made the coffee scrub bar. Um, I've had a little bar of it sitting in my own bathroom that I've been using just to kind of test out the exfoliation and just make sure it was okay. You can definitely feel it. It definitely has like a little bit of grit to it, but it's definitely not overpowering. It doesn't feel like it's like scrubbing off a layer of my skin, like really rough or anything like that. Um, but it is definitely there. So this is kind of what it turned out to at the very end. If you can kind of see this a little bit. My camera, there we go. So it really did maintain its coffee smell between the fragrance oil and the cocoa butter and the cocoa powder I put in it. Um, and it came out to a beautiful color between the coffee that I put into it and the fragrance oil that we were using that smells like coffee beans. And I'm actually really, really proud of this soap. So if you'd like to get yourself a bar of the coffee soap, there's only nine bars available. I didn't make a big batch of it. I just kind of wanted to see how it go and I'm kind of testing out my own soaping abilities. Um, but Bath Bombs for Babies is our Facebook page. There'll be a post with this going up uh, today. So if you'd like to purchase it, go ahead and just let me know that you want a bar that's $10 plus the cost of shipping if you have to ship it out to you. And I'm located in Edmonton. So if you're available to just come pick it up from me, you can absolutely do that too. Just contact me and let me know. The other way that you can buy a bar of this soap is by going to the Carvel Farmer's Market. They're on Thursday nights from 5 to 8. I'm there about every second week or so, including this Thursday, the 25th. So feel free to come on down and buy a bar of soap. I also have some of the citrus swirl soap I've made previously um, and some of the rose uh, soap that I made as well. So you can absolutely feel free to come check that out as well as all my bath bombs will be there. Um, and it's just kind of fun and exciting to kind of try out. So if you want to come join me, absolutely. If you'd like to buy some of the True Heroes coffee they used inside the soap, specifically because they also support mental health, you can go to trueheroescoffee.com. I'm just going to read a little bit of their uh, mission statement as well. Now, they've been created to, in an effort to support all emergency services personnel with a special focus on those suffering with mental health. As emergency responders, we feel compelled to reach out to it to make a difference. And they donate a minimum of 10% of the profits to foundations and charities in support of firefighters, EMS, 911 dispatch, flight pilots, medics, nurses, and other hospital personnel, police officers, RCMP, military, and our corrections officers. So feel free to uh, support them, just like I do, uh, and other charities in your area that support the communities that you live in, uh, and absolutely come down and buy a bar. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this, and we'll catch you later. Bye.